Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate you stopping by. In today's video, um, I'm going to show you a Carolina Coop style automatic heated watering system that I've built to not only uh, water my chicken coop, but also the two quail hutches and the rabbit hutch that you see behind me. And hopefully in the winter it won't freeze because <laughs> I've got the one system piped and it and it feeds water to all of the different hutches that I talked about and it's they're all insulated and it's heated um, the Carolina coop system they don't insulate they do heat um, but it just runs just a really short distance and they have it in really cold weather and they have really good luck with them not freezing so since this since I was running a longer distance I've insulated it and everything and so hopefully, and I built it out of PEX, which is a little more flexible than PVC. So hopefully it'll, it'll hold up to the harsh East Idaho winters that we have here. So I'm excited about it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you that now. Unlike some of my past uh, build projects that I videoed where I built some of the different hutches and things this summer, I'm not really gonna show you the building process. Um, I will show some images that show some of the insides of, of this system as I was building it. This is basic uh, PEX plumbing, uh, you know, the Carolina Coop. I mean, this was it, was, it was complicated from the aspect of I had to figure out how to make it all work and put it together because there wasn't any system like this um, that I could just, you know, take their ideas from and, and build it. Um, but it's it's all basically simple stuff uh, to build and so I think it'll be enjoyable for you if you like this kind of stuff so with that uh, let, let's let's show you the system okay at the outset of this video I'm going to apologize first thing and then I'm not going to mention it again this pile of lumber this is the scraps from my building all of these projects this summer and I just don't have a better place to put it my plan is is to build a a wood shed here and to move the wood around and put it there but I don't know if I'm gonna to get to that before the snow flies because I'm in the process of building a greenhouse over there you can see some of the wood from the tree I took down over there so once I get once I get that wood shed built then my plan is to move it all over into the woodshed okay this is the main uh, part of the of the watering system this is the inside this uh, insulated wooden box here that I've built is a 50 gallon barrel. I have it high off the ground so that the gravity, it, the gravity will flow to the cages and everything. And um, in it is a heater. You can see I've got a, I had an outlet run out here to it so that I got access to power and I have a cord that goes into the heater that goes in the barrel and then one that goes to the pump underneath. Um, I haven't painted the top and I ran out of paint when I was painting the front there so as soon as I get a can of paint in a few days it'll look a little nicer but I didn't want to wait for that for the video so let me show you this system first off we'll show you the insides in a minute if you come over here you can see I've got two lines let me back this up so maybe you can see a little bit better You've got two water, insulated water lines. If I, if I pull that out, you can see it's just PEX pipe that goes right into, into this insulated box. This is the return line, and this is the outgoing line. And they go around to the back of the cages, which I'll show you in a minute. They come around through here, and you can see I've got a regular rabbit nozzle let me open this up so you can see it. I've got a regular rabbit no watering nozzle there. I put the, the wooden board there because um, rabbits chew on everything and I don't mind them chewing on wood, but I didn't want the insulation around the pipe too close because they would have chewed on that and that wouldn't be good for them. Hey little girl. So again, I've got that through all of the cages there's another little sweetie hi honey and behind her you can't you can't really see her watering thing because she's standing in front of it and here's my little buck hey buddy 
Um, his, he's got his over here. So I'll come around here and I'll show you. Here's the insulated pipes. Again, you can see it's just standard PEX with a crimping tool, nothing fancy. Um, I've got as much of it insulated as I possibly could. And you can see that it goes all the way back. Um, the reason for the tape on the rabbit's uh, plastic is because I built the watering system after building the rabbit hutch and I had to cut the plastic to get the um, some of the stuff built in there. If you look this way, uh, you can see this, these are the two quail hutches. Um, you can see the pipe goes all along all the way to the back and it even goes down there. Uh, see if I can zoom in a little for you. You can see it goes there and then it jumps over to being connected to the fence. So I'll show you, I've got um, as much of it insulated as I possibly could. So I'll show you what it looks like from around this side. Open this up. Hi guys. You can see there's their little watering uh, system that we got there. So. Okay, then here's in the quail cage with some of the chucker partridges. Or with all the chucker partridges, I should say. And if you see over here, um, again, I've got to do that insulation on the back there a little better, but just uh, that's the watering nipple. Okay, so that's that, and we'll come around. Just started snowing on me. Love uh, East Idaho. I do, actually, but it just gets cold early. Okay, so here's the insulated pipe. You can see I ran it there behind those bushes. And then it comes over here to the... Uh, I've got it attached there to the fence. And then I just have it strung across here um, and then down to this water bar here. I'll walk around here really quick so that you can see what it looks like from the front. It works really good. Chickens use it a lot. Anyhow, that's how that is working. I want to show you the construction of these water bars just really quick so you can see um, how they're made. Again, it's just normal uh, normal PEX, uh, PEX pipe. This is half inch uh, PEX pipe, white, and this is just a little adapter that attaches to the PEX pipe and has a half inch threaded end on the other end. And then this is a uh, an ad a coupler, I guess you'd call it, from a half inch uh, PVC pipe that is threaded female end on, on there, and then I screwed it on there. This, under this end, this end is a, a glue in end, and this is a good grief, guys. What you spazzing out for? Um, anyway, you can see the purple primer in there. There's just little short pieces of of PVC, half inch PVC pipe that I I cut just long enough to be able to stick in there and prime it and glue it and and in here and also in in this end of this coupler and, and in here and same on this side and with this coupler. So that's how they're put together. These T's you can order online. I'll put a, a, a link below this video um, on Amazon where you can get these tees if you want. Um, you can also buy these tie, this style of horizontal nipples. Um, I didn't want to scrimp. I didn't want to take a chance on getting bad quality, so I ordered these uh, nipples directly from Carolina Coops, a little more expensive. But I'll put a link to, uh, to where you can get those nipples online as well. But just know I didn't buy mine 
mine there. I bought the tees from Amazon, but I these I got directly from Carolina Coop. I'll link the Carolina Coop link as well under below this video. So <clears throat> and I can't show you the the makings of the rabbit cage, but uh, they're pretty much they're basically identical. Um, the only difference, instead of uh, they have the T's and everything, um, the only difference is instead of the the red uh, chicken nipple nipples, um, it has the rabbit nipples. Okay, this is the the chicken water deicer that I'm using. I found it online. Um, it's different. I mean, it's very similar to the one that Carolina Coops uses, only this one is only 150 watts, whereas the ones that uh, Carolina Coops uses, I've heard them say 1,000 watts and 1,500 watts. I'm not sure which one they're currently using. But where my purposes are uh, emergency preparedness, I, you know, if uh, the grid goes down or something bad happens or the power's off or whatever, and I'm living off of my solar power and stuff, I, don't, I want uh, everything to use as, to be as efficient as possible and use as little energy as possible. So this is like, you know, three 60 watt bulbs almost. Okay, so now let's uh, take a look inside the box where the 50 gallon water barrel is and let's show you the components. Okay, if you can see inside this lid, I've got a two inch styrofoam uh, board that I bought from a roofing company um, for insulation on that. You can see I've got a fiberglass board two and a half inches thick here in all of the walls. I also, ha I also have it in the, in the floorboard if you look down here, I even have it in in this front wall that I'm gonna take off. Here's the 50 gallon barrel, and we'll go through that a little bit more um, uh, once I take this, this front off. Okay, so here's that front wall that I just took off of there, and you can see I've got the two and a half inch fiberglass board in there and like I said it's all also in this in the floor um, underneath this plywood now this is a, a water barrel I'll put a link to where I got this water barrel from below the video as well in case you're interested there's lots of them online you can find them pretty easy but I'll still put a link there for you in case that's helpful um, again this is just PEX pipe <coughs> um, I, I had this uh, the, these these two treated pieces of wood that I had this barrel sitting on the reason I screwed this board in there like that is because I thought I was going to put a, a bracket and mount it to that uh, board but when I got installing it this uh, PEX pipe is uh, strong enough it didn't it doesn't need anything holding it I don't, but anyway if you can I'll be quiet for a minute if you can hear, you can hear kind of a hum. It's very, very quiet. That's this pump running. And then if you can hear water dripping, there is some water dripping off of the house. But if you hear, hear kind of the gurgle, gurgle uh, water dripping, that's uh, coming water coming in from the inline because uh, apparently it's dropped below the temperature to where this automatically kicks on. So. The, the pump is pumping and circulating water through it. Whenever in this system, whenever it drops, gets close to freezing, it's, then it, it doesn't have to get all the way to uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but when it gets close to that, I forget what the exact temperature is, um, this pump automatically turns on. And what causes that to happen 
is if you can see under here I have this switch which I got this um, I got the re recommendation from Carolina Coops if you go to their website um, they have a products we love or something like that and this is the the switch that they use this switch is has the it, that's why it's outside of of uh, this box because it needs to be wherever the coldest temperature is as it starts getting towards freezing then this switch turns on which causes this pump to turn on and the water starts circulating I don't think this is a very good idea to have this inside so I'm probably gonna because I was thinking the humidity from having the water barrel and an enclosed so I'm probably gonna take this and move it somewhere else and attach it under here or something that's that's probably what I'll do is I'll I'll move it down here and attach it underneath so it's uh, you know shielded from rain by being under this kind of like that that cord is um, but it's not in here where it'll get all the hue the humidity um, this is the cord that comes from the water heater that I showed you the box of that goes down now this water heater has its own sensor and so um, I don't I didn't have I don't have to plug this water heater into this into this switch because it will automatically turn itself on and off as it's needed as the temperature starts getting below freezing um, automatic de-icers bird chicken water or bird bath or cattle tank de-icers like that they have their own internal temperature turn on, on and off switch <clears throat> so that's pretty much the how this is set up now I'll show you a few images of when I was building this box just to show you what the inside looks like and we'll talk about it a little bit as I started working on putting this video together and doing the editing I found this uh, video clip here that I'd forgotten that I filmed of my building the box that holds the water 50 gallon water barrel and I'm kind of laughing as I'm looking at that because um, there's probably a lot of better ways to build this box than the way I'm doing it here. But the problem was is I was working with really short pieces of wood because I was try trying to build it entirely out of the scrap pile left over from my building the chicken coop and the quail hutches and the rabbit hutch. So as you can see, first I built the floor because I had some shorter straps that were long enough to make up that floor. And then I, I had just enough of the boards that were long, as tall as the uh, water barrel to construct the walls there. So I secured those boards to the floor with pocket hole screws. Okay, this image shows the floor of the water barrel box and the four squares is where I put the fiberglass insulation. And in this image, you can see the same floor, obviously, with the fiberglass insulation in there. And then this shows the whole water barrel box lined with plywood. Okay, I want to show you uh, inside this water barrel. You can see the, the water's pumping. Uh, and so that's the intake line. And it, uh, it just circulates the water and uh, hopefully will keep everything from freezing. So, and this screen is kind of to catch crap, too big a crap from getting in the, in the tank. Okay, so the main thing that keeps this, this system from freezing is the fact that the water is constantly being circulated through the pipes whenever the temperatures outside are close to freezing. Um, the fact that the water is heated in here and very well insulated um, I shouldn't need uh, that 150 watt heater should be plenty since I've got the inside of you know this whole barrel insulated so well and so the, the water will always be 5 or 10 degrees above freezing and always moving and, and circulating now one other thing that I'm gonna do to the the top of this box besides paint it the root the lid 
is I'm gonna put this uh, plastic corrugated pipe, I mean pipe, plastic, plastic corrugated roofing on the top of that box too, just to give it a little bit more protection from the elements. Okay, well, I hope that was interesting. I appreciate you watching the video all the way to the end. Thanks so much. And if you got any value out of the bit, out of the video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. That helps us with the Google algorithm. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you in the next video.